kidstoppress.com. Today we have with us the lovely Suman Agarwal, who's an entrepreneur and founder of selfcareindia.com. So in today's segment, we're going to talk about nutrition for expectant moms. Yeah, this is very close to my heart too because I'm, I have three girls and I've gone through this whole experience. And you know, these questions are always very, very uh, intriguing or it's very... Um, Mothers don't know what to eat during pregnancy, whether they follow their uh, mothers or their right. mother-in-laws right. and they think no, they are going to give us a lot of fatty food and so much ghee and they really right. don't know what right. to do and at the same time they are very concerned about their kid's health, right. the baby which is going to be born, Absolutely. they want to make sure that they give the best to the kid. So I think the best thing to do is to understand the diet remains almost the same, mm -hmm. the timing remains the same and you don't eat for two, you eat yeah. for uh, one yeah. and just the maybe 20% of the calories go more. Mm -hmm. So uh, we as a calculation just uh, increase 30% of calories for the expected right. mom. And uh, but so that's a point to know. Only 30% 20% of yes. the calories yes. is what actually goes to the baby. And what's the ideal weight gain that uh, that an expectant mom should look at in that span of nine months? Between uh, eight to 12 kilos right. is ideal. And I think many of the women in today's it's world are, and even the doctors, the gynax, yeah. are very, very particular. Absolutely. The ma mom is gaining too right. much weight, they say don't go on the diet. Right. Yeah, what I feel is that uh, uh, in order to maintain or control their weight, they should not go very low in fat because right. the, bad, uh, the baby needs the fat. Right. And in fact, the baby's brain grows on cholesterol. In the, for development right. of the baby's brain, we need cholesterol. So they should not banish the fatty food, especially, I mean not fatty food, they should not be opting for fat-free food. Right. So they should not be opting for fat-free milk and absolutely uh, no oil in their diet. The oil as well as the fat in the milk is very, very important for right. baby's growth. Uh, omega-3, right. so the fish, fish is very good. If you right. can't take fish, maybe omega capsules are very good. So these are the important food or maybe the nuts and oil seeds right. is very important. And eating for two is absolutely uh, no. not required. So they are, uh, they have to in fact uh, uh, take care about the nutrition in the food rather take than... Take nutrition yes. versus calories, yeah, calories and foods yes. to bath, right? So uh, the proteins are very very important to be had. The uh, they should be having for the baby's bone growth. They again need more calcium. Right. And if they don't take enough milk protein or the calcium rich food, the calcium is going to be depleted from their own bones. Right. So it's very important that they understand this fact and make sure that calcium rich food is included in the diet. So the balanced diet starts from see till the till the time they are fourth or fifth month pregnant the stomach is still small right. so they can still manage to have little bigger meals but as soon as the fifth month sets in their meal should be smaller and spread apart so breakfast suppose they have to have the major meals four hours apart so breakfast is at nine the lunch should be at one evening snacks around five and dinner should be at nine and uh, uh, the mid meal should be say 11 and 1, 11 and 3 and 7 can be like a drink like coconut water or soup or uh, buttermilk these right. are the mid meal options right. breakfast should comprise of a protein and carb balance so say egg and toast mm -hmm. is a good option curd and paratha for vegetarians uh, milk and ma mm -hmm. is a very good option so it's a protein and a carb balance which right. is, has to be maintained the lunch is the same thing if you are an Indian and naturally right. so you can opt for roti very very simple Indian meal right. roti dal, sabji dahi right. it's a perfect, perfect complete, meal. complete meal and if you are working you can take uh, you know the wraps which I right. mentioned so right. in the books. So uh, protein, like you know, pulse protein or a chicken or egg right. egg roll along with a glass of butter meal, which almost yeah. becomes a complete meal. Then evening snacks again should be just a carb to keep your energy going, and then the dinner should be almost like lunch, but can be made interesting with um, different menus, Chinese, Thai, Italian, yeah. but making sure. sure the protein comes at the same time. Absolutely. I think for nausea control, best is fruits. Fruits are a very good way to control nausea. Yogurt and uh, these are the two food I have found myself personally and I tell mothers to have when they feel nausea. And uh, definitely avoid carbonated drinks. Right. 100%. Right. And uh, there are certain food they should avoid it, uh, totally, mm -hmm. which is uh, too much tea, coffee, caffeine, colas, cigarette, alcohol. alcohol. Yeah, all these are. Uh, important to avoid and uh, processed food, of course. Yeah.
they should be avoidable junk food, fried food. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, when you have fried food, the body works harder to, to digest. So then you feel very full and you feel lethargy. So it's very important to avoid all those uh, foods, especially when you're pregnant. Sure. Vegetarians, don't worry. There's still many options of proteins for you. You just have to know them and make sure you include them in their diet, in your diet. So uh, we, for, for example, milk is one of the best options of protein for you. It is uh, uh, first class protein. It's the only first class protein for you. So make sure, being the country of Krishna, you do not banish milk from your diet and it's very rich in calcium too. So milk in form of dahi and paneer are also welcome. So I myself are lactose intolerant. So but I make sure my breakfast has some yogurt or paneer and lunch has some dahi and dinner has some uh, paneer too. Yeah. But the quantity is very important. If you have too much of milk protein and paneer, you are going to gain weight. Yeah. So it's a fine balance you need to create. Yeah. Then the second protein which is good for vegetarian and which replaces your uh, chicken and uh, eggs. eggs and everything is pulse protein. So for lunch and dinner, make sure some pulse protein is cooked at home. For example, dal, chole, rajma and uh, ma mangodis. Yeah. You know, these are the right. pitla, these yeah. Maharashtrians make pitla. All these are the sambar. Yeah. Right. All these are the pulse protein which can add it to lunch and dinner to balance the meal completely. Right. Yeah, so don't eat for two. Calorie increases only by 20%. But the protein increases by 30%, so make sure your meals are nutritious. So banish the food which can affect you and your baby's health, like cigarettes, alcohol, caffeine drinks, and uh, colas, and those are the drinks that are totally to be avoidable. Make sure the fats are present in your diet, don't banish the fats too. And then we have uh, sleep. Sleep is extremely important for the baby's growth and your own mental state. And then exercise is as important as rest. So we know that the pregnant woman should sleep and rest, but uh, with the doctor's permission, they should manage to do some kind of physical activity which is allowed. They should join the yoga classes for pregnancy, pregnant women and uh, to go for strolls in the evenings. So these are the important points I would like to convey to all pregnant women. So and thank you so much for speaking with us today. It's an absolute pleasure. Same here. I love the show and thank you. Mahani.